Welcome to another unit of this VBA course. In this unit we're going to talk about how I can use VBA to read data from worksheets and again when I did something with the data write data back into a worksheet. So if I compare this with the program which I already have prepared here, in this case I basically give my variables 3 and 4 and I do the output with the message box. And this I want to replace with reading the numbers here. I see this in the background, my Excel sheet. And write them, not with message box, but again here in my Excel file. Whenever I want to refer to my Excel sheet, the easiest version to go, that's like the simple underlying command, that's the cells command. Cells targets one of those, well, obviously, cells. However, the difference is, in Excel, I would refer to this cell as B2. Here in VBA, I'm using a bit more of a mathematical approach to it. So here, I'm addressing this like an entry in a matrix. And well, the matrix underlying this is second row, second column. So I refer to this as cells 2.2. Correspondingly, here, the second entry, the second input, that's at row 3, column 2. So I refer to this as cells 3.2. If I'm using the cells, this can work, this will work in most situations. However, especially if later on I'm working with user forms or more complex objects, it might make more sense to put a dot value behind this just to differentiate that what I'm interested in is actually the value inside and not the background color or some other stuff. So I'm just interested in the value. So then I'm doing my calculation. I'm going like 3 to the power of 4, get my output. And I don't want to write the output in a message box, but here in this cell. Well, the cell where I want to put this cells, that's like 5, 2. So here I can put this as 5, 2. And then I just assign this by going should be equal to my output. And it's relatively straightforward. And if I do this here, I get as a result here 3 to the power of 4. So this works like a sham, relatively easy, relatively straightforward. The problem, however, could be, at this point, I can only refer to this one worksheet, which is actually, at the moment, activated. So this needs to be open in the background. I need to be able to see this and not any other. Okay, here aren't any other, but imagine I had a different one, a sheet 2, 3. Then they are not active at the moment. So here, if I go here, this is deactivated. If I go here, this one is deactivated. And I can, with this way of addressing them, only work in the active worksheet. So if I want to get around this, I can instead put something in front of the cells. That's the worksheets command. Here, I need to tell them which worksheet. So for me, this is sheet one. However, sheet one, that's the name so text, so I need to put this right. I need to put this into this. So now it works. So it knows take this from exactly this worksheet. Same thing I can do here. Go with worksheets. Give the name of the sheet. Sheet 1. Dot. And it takes the values always from this one worksheet. So if now I switch to the second sheet and run this, he will still output the 81 here because he uses the values from the sheet before. But he writes in the actual sheet, which is open. Okay, so this works with referring to worksheets, different worksheets. I can also make this a bit more complex and 
refer to different files. This would be here, well, worksheets, table, the file itself, that's a workbook. So here I can go with workbooks. Then I again write which workbook. Here I have book one. So I go with book one. So at this point, he refers to exactly this file. If I run this, see, works the same way, but I could read from other files. Well, this works fine. I might be motivated to put an XLSX here because this is the file name. If I do this, I get an error. So in this case, I only need the name. I don't need the ending, the file type, just the name. Same thing for the sheets, only the name. So this way I can read from different other workbooks, different other sheets and write in different other workbooks, different sheets, different cells. So I have a specific logic which I'm following here, which is like workbook, worksheet, cells, and then property of this cell, which is the value. I could do the same thing if I go, for example, with background color. Then I can read the yellow here and the orange here and write this somewhere else. So I'm relatively flexible with this cells command and it subcommands or more or less overlaying command. Okay, and this already is everything I want to talk about in this unit. So I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more on this topic, feel free to visit the rest of the course or have a look at the corresponding playlist. See you and goodbye.